Hey, what's up, everybody? Door now, Dana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today, we're going to talk about why most mortgage professionals fail to reach their goals. It's the beginning of the year; everyone's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to really kick ass and take names in the new year. Uh, some of you had your best years ever in 2020, so praise the progress, hallelujah! We'll take all that low-hanging fruit with these crazy low rates and we'll take that win all day long. The question is, are you able to sustain it? Are you able to grow it? Are you able to work smarter, not harder, so you can earn even more in 2021 while working less hours with more balance, more free time, and more enjoyment? That's really what it's all about. It's about progress, right? That's the spout under which all the good stuff pours out. So the question is, how can we grow and expand versus stagnate or regress? Now, there's a lot of landmines that hold people back from winning. There's a lot of landmines that keep people back from achieving and crushing their goals. And so I want to highlight that today because, of course, as we launch into this new year, you've got things you want to accomplish. You've got new mountains you want to conquer. And if you aren't really clear about what it takes to crush those goals, and if you aren't wide-eyed and have a lucid understanding of the landmines that can hold you back from the results and the dreams and the goals you want to accomplish, it's easy to step on them. And the clients I work with and the achievers who are leaders in the industry, who are the top producers in the industry, understand it's a lot more expensive to learn from your own mistakes than it is to learn from an expert. So that's why I'm here serving this up to you from a silver spoon on a silver platter is to teach you how to avoid these landmines, how to crush your goals, how to work smarter, not harder. So let's dive into it, shall we? Let's get into the different aspects of what you need to know to absolutely crush your goals like a hot knife through butter. Now, one of the things I want to highlight real quick is that if you are in your business right now and you're struggling, you're frustrated, chances are that's a sign that your way ain't working. So if you're spending you know, five to 10 plus hours of proactive lead generation just to get one measly lead and most of those aren't converting, you're definitely doing it the hard way. If you're spinning your wheels in the same spot, banging your head against the same glass ceiling, chances are you're doing it the hard way. If you're sifting through a bunch of crap leads on social media like Facebook, for example, and all you're doing is just sifting through a bunch of chaff with very few kernels, just under a mountain of crap leads that don't convert, that's definitely doing it the hard way. If realtors won't give you the time of day because you're either a newbie and you don't have the clout or credibility, or you're an old fart or you're a veteran, but you just don't know how to make that overture because those realtors are already quote unquote married to their lender and they're brushing you off and they're not giving you the time of day, Again, that means you're doing it the hard way. That's a symptom that you're doing it the hard way. If you're cold calling, if you're grinding cold calling, banging your head against the wall, that is definitely caveman style marketing. That's definitely doing it the hard way. If you're relying primarily on refis and 60% plus or 50% plus of your business is coming from refis, that means you're in a very precarious position. You're sitting on a one-legged stool and you're setting yourself up to be first and most affected by market downturns and rate increases. It's not a matter of if, just when versus first and least and last. You are first and most affected, which puts you in a very precarious position. So that is definitely doing it the hard way from the standpoint that you're going to get caught with your pants down when rates go up, scrambling to recoup that lost revenue. Because as soon as rates go up, that refi business is drying up and now you're going to be forced into the purchase business. And if you haven't been proactively attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, then you're sitting on a one legged stool and you're bound to fall and hit the ground. And that is not the kind of business you want to be building. A business sitting on quicksand is not a healthy nor a stable and success certain place to be. So we want you to build on the rock build on a rock that allows you to have peace of mind that you're least and last affected by market downturns or rate increases, not first and most. So again, that's a sign that you're doing it the hard way. If you're relying on all that low hanging fruit, it might feel great to be making so much money. You're probably kicking ass and taking names, chewing bubble gum because these rates are crazy low and people are coming in droves to refinance. 
But what happens when all that refi business goes away? We already just had a rate increase recently. Chances are that's turning the faucet off a little bit with your refis already. And it was only a small increase. So what happens when it increases again? What happens when we get an even more significant increase? Chances are the faucet of refis is going to drop to a bare minimum. And now you, along with the droves of other loan officers, are going to be scrambling after the same realtors. What are you going to have that's going to make you stand out from the clutter? What are you going to do that's going to make you stand out from the other Joe Schmo LOs offering great rates and great service? Just because you got a pretty face and a nice looking business card and some low rates and great service, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to send you business, right? If you've been in this business for any period of time, you know that to be true. So if you're stagnant, if you're relying primarily on refis, if you're regressing in your revenue in 2021 in comparison to last year, if you're working longer and harder for your money, chances are you're doing it the hard way. We want to start to build stability through diversification, which means multi-pillared, multimedia, multi-method approach that allows you to build that solid power Parthenon as Jay Abraham, the marketing savant, has made famous. The power of Parthenon is referencing to the Parthenon in Greece. It has stood through the ages over 3,000 years. Why is that? because it has multiple pillars, building stability. You wanna have that same stability so that you've got a rock solid recession proof business and you couldn't give a rat's ass what's going on in the economy or the rates because you've insulated yourself from all of those impacts of the storms that it's not a matter of if they'll hit, it's a matter of when. When those storms hit, you've built your business on a rock that will stand and withstand the storm so that you're thriving even when others are struggling just to be surviving. That's the key. So the question is, if you're in a place where your business is not working or it's not working at the level you want or it's not working at the level where you can really scale it to be a business that's thriving, that's consistent, that allows you to no longer have to worry where your next deal is going to come from. If you haven't achieved that, if you haven't cracked the code on that, the question is why, why is it not working? Right? It's one thing to, you know, be succeeding. It's another thing to succeed and not know why you're succeeding on the flip side. When you're losing, what sucks the most about losing is not knowing you're losing, but not knowing why you're losing. So on both sides of the equation, it really gives one a huge amount of certainty and confidence when you know why, the big question why. So I'm going to open your eyes to understand the why behind that today by walking through five common causes of failure in this business. Now, I've been in this game for 16 years. This is not my, my first rodeo. I've seen the highs, the lows, everything in between. Now, some of you may have been in the business for even longer than that. The only thing I've been doing is helping mortgage pros create breakthroughs for 16 years. That's the only thing I've been doing. So I've had, had a front row seat to the carnage of people failing, the carnage of people getting chewed up and spat out. And I've also had a front row seat to having people create spectacular breakthroughs, doubling, tripling, quadrupling, quintupling their income in a matter of two, three, four, five months. We're talking rapid fire transformation. And so I wanna just highlight the negative side of the equation for a moment because obviously you know most people will do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure right so most of us will do more to avoid failure and train wrecks and getting chewed up and spat out than we will to climb the ladder of success and achieve glory not that we don't want glory and abundance and opulence and freedom we all want that but the very first thing that we're going to make sure we do is avoid the train wrecks the failures the landmines because case in point if you see a news broadcast, which one's going to pull you in more? The fact that it's sunny skies, lollipops, rainbows, and unicorns, or a, a looming storm is coming? you got to be knowing if you see the headline that a storm is coming, you're going to pay attention a lot more. So this is the sort of thing that I want to bring to your awareness, to your consciousness, so that you can make sure you avoid these storms, okay? So the first thing, a big cause of failure is lack of a compelling why. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people in this business either A, just set income goals, and income goals, frankly, are not enough, right? Because at the end of the day, as soon as you're somewhat comfortable, 
then it lacks a lot of motivation. Now, if you have the hellfire of you know bills coming in and having too much month at the end of the money and the fact that you're not able to slay dragons for the family and put food on the table, that's different. When you have an absolute necessity to slay dragons for the family, to put food on the table and to pay the bills, you're going to grind, you're going to hustle, you're going to do whatever it freaking takes. But as soon as you get to a relatively comfortable place financially, the difference between 300K and 400K or the difference between 300K and half a million or half a million and a million, yes, you get fancier toys, you get maybe more luxurious, more, uh, luxurious vacations, maybe you get a property on the water. And that's all cool. But again, most people will do more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. So complacency starts to kick in, right? The drift towards the comfort zone starts to kick in. Compromise, neglect starts to kick in. We start to take the path of least resistance. So you need to have a compelling why that's more than just the money because rarely will you go out there and conquer the highest mountains, the highest summits just for the money. That's why I often say that good is always the mortal enemy of great because when you're doing good, you're comfortable. And to achieve greatness, it's going to push you out of your comfort zone. It's going to get you doing things that are frankly uncomfortable and inconvenient. Now, why would you do that if you're comfortable? You're not. you got to have a white, hot fire burning desire that's beyond just the money. Maybe it's to help your parents, to give them you know, the ability to pay off their mortgage. Maybe it's to be an example for your kids, where you're able to really rise up and show your kids not what show your kids what it looks like not just to have dreams but to make them real. Maybe it's to liberate kids from the shackles of human trafficking and sexual exploitation. I have a business right now I'm about to launch, and 10% of our profits are going to be going towards liberating kids from sexual exploitation and slavery and human trafficking. You got to be knowing the absolute heartbeat of why I do what I do. It's the fire of desire. It's the rocket fuel that has me get up every day and push past the resistance to get me swing, swimming upstream, even when it's uncomfortable. And so you've got to find something that's compelling that makes you want to go slay dragons like never before. And chances are it's going to be more than the money. So what's your why? What gets you bouncing out of bed with pep in your step and sparkle in your eye? What's your vision, your mission that has you conquering even when you feel like all you want to do is just lay in the corner in the fetal position and suck your thumb when you're having a bad day? Like, let's be real. I have days like that. I have days where it's like, man, I'm getting my ass kicked because there's some kind of challenge or setback or obstacle. And I've got to dig deep in my soul and find out what my why is get reconnected to those kids we're going to liberate, get reconnected to the fact that those kids have moms and dads that don't even know where the frick they are and they're heartbroken and they're praying every day to see their kid again. They're wondering if their kid is even alive. And that darkness, that hell and my calling to be the radiant light in that darkness to make a difference for even one child is what gets me to do what I do. Be, and of course, on the flip side, to help people create breakthroughs, to help you guys pull yourselves out of the hell of your suffering, out of the hell of living in I can't afford it prison, out of the hell of not being able to provide for your family or out of the hell of the stress and the frustration and to liberate you guys into the radiant light of a new life with prosperity, with freedom, with power, a sense of peace of mind and passion, a fulfillment. That's for me what gets me out of bed every morning. What's your why? You got to get connected to that why because that's the rocket fuel that's going to propel you forward to not just get by, not just make do, but make history. We're not here to just make do. We're here to make history. But in order to do that, you have to have a compelling why. Now, the other part of it that often causes people to derail and implode in this business is doubt. 1% doubt is going to take you out. Doubt and fear is the silent killer. Now, it's insidious though, right? Because how it shows up is every day there's this niggling sense of where is my next deal going to come from? And worried about the future, worried about the uncertainty of the future, worried about you know, how do I plan for the future when 
you know, I'm just looking deal to deal to deal. And this worry and this doubt starts to corrode your power. You start to dim your light because you're so concerned about self-preservation and self-protection. The, the, the thing about it is that your, your mind has been orchestrated by divine intelligence to work perfectly. Your mind is designed to work perfectly. It's designed, that part of your mind that is all about self-preservation is there to protect you. It's there to protect you from things like poverty, things like you know having no money in the bank account and no food on your table. And those are pretty important fears, kind of like you know when you're on the edge of a building, on a four story building, it's probably a pretty healthy fear to be fearful of falling off the edge. That's a healthy fear of gravity, right? And going splat on the ground. So there's healthy fears and unhealthy fears. The fear that takes you out is the fear that has you more committed to your comfort zone than your dream. The fear that takes you out is have you more concerned about making the wrong choice than making the right choice. The fear that takes you out is the fear that has your power and your passion and your life energy strangled every day because there's this knot in your gut that's corroding your energy. Energetically, you're vibrating at a lower level because you are under this cloud of fear, the stress, that anxiety. So instead of you shining your, your light and shining it bright, it's dimming your energy. And that is causing you to half step, to pull punches, to not show up in the fullness of who you're called to be, the fullness of your power, the fullness of the best version of yourself, the fullness of your passion, the fullness of your certainty and your confidence. If you have your confidence eroded and corroded by fear and doubt, that can take you out if you let it. So that's where you recommitting to your dream and giving thanks for your dream in advance, feeling the glory of your dream as if you already have it, getting yourself energetically attuned to your dream so that you feel as if it's already yours. It's already a done deal. It's already anchored to your identity. If you wanna make half a million a year, you're already seeing yourself as a half a million dollar player. If you wanna be a top producer, you're already seeing yourself as a top producer. So it's about you building that certainty. But if you're ruminating on all the what ifs, what if that, that deal implodes? What if I can't get any more deals? What if I can't pay the bills? What if I end up getting chewed up and spat out? Those what ifs will take you out. But it's healthy to have those what ifs when you're showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. I mean, if you're head and looking for the sunset, it's healthy to say, hey, am I going the right direction? Because if you're going the wrong direction enthusiastically, that ain't going to help you a whole lot, right? So it's also important to have accurate thinking where you actually bring truth to the equation, not just delusional optimism. So if you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, tell yourself the truth and say, this ain't going to cut it. I need a freaking tank. Let's roll out the tank. The butter knife or the pea shooter ain't going to cut it. So that fear is a good thing because it's leading to you, to you to the truth, waking you up. It's the alarm bells trying to wake you up to say, get equipped. Meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked will not cut it. Not today, not any day. But you've got to exercise your mind towards accurate thinking in that fear and then let it propel you towards you getting equipped to win and then focus on winning. Give thanks for the winning in advance and anchor your identity as a winner. Does that make sense, guys? Because if you don't, that fear will take you out. The third landmine that can take you out of the game and causes many mortgage professionals to fail is doing it the hard way. We already talked about this, right? So cold calling, for example, that's definitely doing it the hard way. Relying just on refis and not getting that solid foundation of purchase business, that's definitely doing it the hard way. Relying on low producing, whining, sniveling, complaining, jelly, donut eating, low producing, mediocre realtors, that's definitely doing it the hard way. They'll send you a deal once every three, four, five, six months instead of multiple deals a month from a top producer. So these sorts of things, neglecting your database. If you have a database of past clients, you've got a hundred or more past clients. If you're not getting three deals per month in the form of repeat and referral business for every 100 past clients, you're doing it the hard way. You're leaving a shit ton of money on the table unwittingly because you don't have a system to mine the gold from that database. That's the lowest hanging fruit in your business. Always has been, always will be. But if you don't have a system to monetize it, you're leaving all that business to your competitors. That's no bueno, friends. You might as well put it in your coffers instead of theirs. 
So doing it the hard way basically is a symptom of you being unequipped, ill-equipped. Now, unfortunately, your mortgage company owner, your sales manager, they're just giving you what they have. They can't give you that which they don't have, right? So they're telling you, cold call the same 40 realtors every Monday. Why? Because that's what worked for them 10 freaking years ago. Well, it's a new world. What worked 10 years ago doesn't work anymore. But if you're getting told what to do from someone who did it 10 years ago, and now they're just riding fat and happy on all the repeat and referral business from their big ass database. And then they're telling you that because you're a newbie, you got to be doing cold calls every Monday, harping on these realtors while everyone else is doing the same thing. Come on now, you guys are intelligent enough to know. You're intuitive enough to know that that ain't going to freaking cut it. You know it and I know it, but that's what these so-called mortgage coaches are telling you to do. Because frankly, they don't know anything else, but it's old school methods from the dark ages. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of mortgage professionals professionals are being told to do. And then they wonder why it's such a grind. So I liken it to try to build a skyscraper. You want to build a skyscraper of opulence, abundance, prosperity, freedom. To build that skyscraper, you need to dig deep because the more you dig deep in the foundation, the higher you can build. But if you're digging that hole with a gardening trowel, we got a freaking problem, don't we? That ain't going to cut it. That's doing it the hard way. Baking in the sun, browbeaten, all sweaty, grinding all day in the hot sun with a gardening trowel when you can just bust out the, you know, the excavator and just get that bad boy done within half a day rather than grinding year after year after year. Come on now, there's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way, right? So doing it the hard way is definitely a big reason why people get chewed up and spat out. 80% of mortgage professionals in this business get chewed up and spat out within the first two years. Those who manage to survive only make 75K. That's a bona fide certified fact. Look it up on the internet. And that's before tax, not after tax. That doesn't leave you much after all the bills are paid, after you pay Uncle Sam, you're left with maybe 40, 45K net after taxes. That's not gonna pay for many groceries. So we wanna make sure you don't fall into being one of those statistics. Uh, another big cause of failure in this business is lack of consistency. So once you start doing a couple, three deals a month, what often happens is mortgage professionals start to get lazy. They start to work in their business instead of on their business. And because they have enough business to kind of keep them busy in the minutia of paper pushing, they neglect to do the proactive marketing. They neglect to do the proactive uh, business building activities. And because they aren't consistent in doing that and doing it effectively, what happens is they just work in their business instead of on their business, waiting for the phone to ring instead of making the phone ring. And next thing you know, they're wondering why they have these steep peaks and valleys, feast or famine up one month, down the next, up one month, down the next. And they're forever chasing their tail in this cul-de-sac of worrying where their next deal is going to come from because they lack consistency in the, that proactive prospecting mode. And they're in paper pushing mode and they're waiting for the phone to ring instead of making the phone ring. So if you want to build consistency in your pipeline, it's mission critical that you get consistent in your proactive prospecting and your proactive lead generation. Lead generation is the lifeblood of your business. But if you're only doing it once in a blue moon, once in a while, it's chances are it's because you don't really know what to do, right? Or you kind of know what to do, but you're doing it the hard way. So it's like so much time and energy and effort. You're like, is the juice really worth the squeeze? I mean, I'm putting in 10 hours to get one lead. Most of them are converting. Do I really even bother? Why do I bother with that? So oftentimes the reason why mortgage professionals don't do proactive prospecting and lead generation activities more often is because they're grinding in the mud with concrete blocks on their feet, doing it the hard way, cold calling and these other methods, or they're getting crap leads from Zillow or crap leads from Facebook. And they're sifting through all this gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. They're like, man, this is so not worth it. Like stick a gun to my head right now. This is not worth it, right? So the big reason why people aren't consistent is because they don't know how to do it in a way that's self-reinforcing. Like if you knew for every hour you put in with a proven plan that actually worked, that you're making 1000 2000 
in commissions, filling your pipeline for the future, and that begot more repeat and referral business, you'd be doing that all freaking day and Sundays, true? So the big reason behind why you lack consistency is because you lack clarity and confidence in a game plan that actually produces cash, true or not true, right? So that's why it's so mission critical that you guys have a plan that gives you maximum juice, maximum reward for your efforts, your time, and your money so that it's self-reinforcing to do it and to do it every day. I call it the hour of power. You can miss a meal, but you don't miss your hour of power, right? Because your hour of power is what's filling your pipeline for the future. Your hour of power is what gives you peace of mind that your pipeline's going to continue to grow month after month, year after year. Your hour of power allows you to have that certainty that when the storm hits, you're least and last affected versus first and most. So the hour of power is key, but you got to do it consistently. And if you're not doing it consistently, well, that's why your income is so inconsistent. That's just a symptom of a deeper rooted problem. And last but not least, the fifth reason why so many mortgage professionals do not reach their goals and fail and crash and burn is because they lack the right structure, the right system, the right support. It's kind of like the blind leading the blind, right? These sales managers, these company owners, they mean well, but the stuff that they're teaching their LOs worked 10, 15, 20 years ago. It doesn't work anymore. And that's why we're in business. That's why people hire us because mortgage professionals who have an ounce of ambition and are sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing it the hard way, grinding it, I can't afford it prison, reach out to us to solve that problem because they want a expert who can take them by the hand to give them the right structure, the right system, so that they can just stick the key in the ignition and drive away so they can condense decades into days, so they can bypass all the landmines and just go straight to what works. I call it the shortest path to the cash, right? Why meander through the wilderness when you can just take a straight path to the cash? So that's precisely why people hire us, to get that structure, to get those systems, to get the right support, so that they can get straight to making top producer money, freedom money, liberate their spouse money, have a cabin on the water money, whatever it is that motivates you, whatever it is that's your dream. And to not have to do this slow, painful grind up the mountain watching paint dry, that's painful and it's unnecessary. The shortest path to the cash is and always will be attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling. And if you have a database, if you're a veteran, mining the gold from your database so you can maximize repeat and referral business. There is no shorter path to the cash than that. That is it, friends but you need the right structure, the right system and the right uh, support for that. Otherwise, you're just meandering. You're throwing yogurt up at the fan, hoping something sticks. How well is that working for you so far? If you're watching this, listening to this right now, and you know you could be making two, three times what you're making now, working the same or less hours, you know that there's a lot at stake in you not knowing what you don't know. See, most people, they think, hey, I don't know marketing or I don't know how to do technology or I don't know how to do automation or I don't know how to create a compelling hook to attract these top producing realtors. So you know what you don't know and that helps to some degree. But what really helps is to understand that the biggest value that a wicked effective coach can bring to the table is to shine a light on the realm called you don't know that you don't know. The stuff that's holding your back holding you back that's in your blind spot that you don't even know. It's not even on your radar. You don't even know that you don't know about it. That's the stuff that takes you out. That's the stuff that whittles away your effectiveness and your productivity. So that's why people hire us, not just for the systems, not just for the turnkey campaigns, not just for the wicked, effective, compelling hooks to attract these top producing realtors and to be able to book appointments with them like a hot knife through butter. All that's great and fine and dandy. And that's a big reason why people hire us. But another big reason why they hire us is because they know if they want to be a champion level performer, they got to have a champion level coach who can reveal their blind spots, reveal the realm called they don't know what they don't know. So if you're watching this or listening to this and you've got some big goals you want to accomplish and, and crush for 2021 and you want to position yourself to be least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most, and you're listening to this and you wanna at least add an additional $100,000 plus to your annual income and you wanna work smarter, not harder, and you wanna be able to do it in a way that's a whole lot more fun with a whole lot more flow and fulfillment and a whole lot more enjoyment of the journey, 
then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business, we look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you wanna be, and if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like and how to achieve that. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way though, friends, our goal for you is that you leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if you'd like to book that and get on our calendar and have a conversation, a real talk conversation about what it's really gonna take to create a breakthrough in your business, to crush your income goals and to create the freedom and the abundance you've always dreamed of, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, friends. So you know you can keep doing what you've always been doing, keep getting what you've been getting. But if you're sick and tired of that, if you're sick and tired of the grind, if you're sick and tired of the stress and the frustration, if you know that your way ain't working at the level you need it to, reach out to the experts. Reach out to the bona fide experts that have been eating, sleeping, and eating this for freaking breakfast all day, every day for 16 years. And let us show you the pathway to abundance. Let us show you the pathway to crush your goals like never before. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging with me. We just talked about the five different reasons why mortgage professionals fail to achieve their income goals and their business goals and how to avoid them. So I trust you got some value, some distinction, some clarity out of this today. And again, if you would like to shine some light on how our expertise and our systems and our tools and our support can help you create a breakthrough, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to serve you guys. I trust you got some value from this. My name is Doran Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed and we'll talk to you very soon on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Make it a great one. Let's rock this.